Hi, my name's Sue Isbell. I'm the Head of Department of E-Learning here at Culver Grove State College. Thank you so much for taking the time to find out more about the e-learning faculty, the subjects that we have, and the different partnerships and programs. In e-learning, we're going way beyond today. Are you ready for your digital future? When it comes to technology, what's here today is gone tomorrow. The latest smart device you just bought, soon to be outdated. The internet will be transformed beyond recognition. Think over 30 billion devices being hooked up to the internet of things by 2020. You'll talk to your appliances, they'll talk to each other and know what you want before you know it yourself. Customization is about to transform every industry. Robotics are already replacing workers. Tomorrow's computers won't be beside us, they'll be inside us. Soon, we'll control technology with our minds. Human brain interfaces are expected within 20 years. Imagine this, your DNA will be sequenced to find a cure just for you that's delivered by nanobots at the molecular level. Shops will use technologies to sell us anything, at any time, anywhere on Earth. 3D printers will soon make anything on demand, from spare parts to a human heart. Driverless cars will drop the kids at sport. We'll fly from Australia to Europe in 49 minutes. Next, we'll holiday in space. What the next wave of nano, bio and quantum technology will bring is anyone's guess. The possibilities are endless. So what does this all mean for you? New technology creates winners and losers. Today's job market is being transformed, with nearly half of all jobs at risk of being replaced by computers in the next two decades. From accountants, to real estate agents, to librarians, to taxi drivers, and hundreds more. The jobs in demand will use skills robots don't have yet. Creativity, common sense, and leadership especially in the use of technology. Already, 40% of Australia's best paid jobs are in ICT. Soon, all the best jobs will involve ICT. We're constantly hearing about how new digital technologies are already transforming daily lives, industries and career or job roles. What do you know about some of these new technologies and the impact that they're having on different careers or roles that you're looking at? What impact will they have on your life and your chosen career or job? Please make sure you are doing some research around how your industry, future career or role is going to be possibly disrupted or transformed. We were so lucky last year to be able to have the amazing Dr. Jordan Nguyen join us in our Way Beyond Today event last year. What he is doing around robotics, around working with people with disabilities, using virtual reality is absolutely inspirational and I encourage you to investigate further how technologies can solve problems and make such a big difference to people's lives. Marita Cheng is also working in this type of career, another inspirational young person. If you're wanting to find out more about the top technology trends, keep an eye on Gartner which they share each year, identifying which new technologies are going to be impacting on different areas and they're the ones that you want to make sure that you are both confident and capable in using but also aware of how they're transforming industry, careers or job roles. If you're studying a digital solutions or an ICT course then you will have that confidence and capabilities to be able to design, create and influence future digital solutions solving problems. Otherwise, you may just be disrupted by these technologies. Each year, Australia's peak ICT industry body, the Australian Computer Society, work with Deloitte to publish a Digital Pulse report which gives information about the state of the economy and the future digital workforce. 
Now this is an ever-increasing area and Australia cannot get enough skilled technology workers so this means many many jobs for students into the future. The Deloitte report, Digital Pulse report for 2019 has found that the digital workforce is growing across industries. So it's forecast that by 2018 to 2014, uh, 2024, sorry, there are going to be more ICT people employed across more industries. So these are some amazing figures here. If you look at towards the bottom, equivalent to 43,400 additional workers are going to be needed with these growth trends that are predicted. Healthcare in particular has a strong demand. Health is being digitized. So another example of how ICT or technical skills, being able to design and create a digital solution is becoming a really critical skill for students. With digitization and digital technologies transforming so many industries, careers, job roles, the digital workforce is now across more occupational groups than ever. So the ICT industry itself is no longer a standalone industry, it's embedded into almost every other industry. Many industries are now using non-traditional pathways such as micro-credentialing and higher apprenticeships, so make sure you check these out too. Our partnership with the Australian Computer Society is trying to create a talent pipeline from school to industry to benefit both students and industry, and that's all industries that rely on digital technologies, not just the ICT industry. With government and industry, all industries identifying such a need for more skilled technical employees, the Queensland Government has this year released a new Gateway to Industry Schools program in ICT and the Australian Computer Society is hosting this and this is a fantastic opportunity for our staff and students to connect with industry, to engage in more work experience, to learn from industry professionals. So there's many, many benefits for both students, for schools and for industry and this will very much enable that vision of our students being at the start of the talent pipeline into the ICT industry or those industries that heavily rely on ICTs or digital technologies. So this is a fantastic opportunity for our students from this from 2020. I encourage you to check out the new ICT GISP or Gateway Program website. Uh, the ACS Foundation has developed this ICT career world. Were, uh, wheel, sorry, where it breaks up into various areas, uh, different types of ICT roles. You can go in, you can find out more about them, you can see a video of someone in that role talking about what they actually do in their role. So this is a fantastic way to find out more about different careers and job roles, how they are, how, what's so exciting about them today because all of these have changed significantly in recent years um, and a fantastic resource for you to get more information from. The college also participates in a number of other gateway to industry programs including advanced manufacturing. Now this industry is being transformed by digitization and automation and they also are looking for students who have those skills that are developed through digital solutions and ICT subjects. So please make sure you investigate the resource. There's a link there to the career tool and check out Watkins Steel who are leading the way in advanced manufacturing using 3D laser scanning and augmented, augmented reality to totally transform their workflow which is based on an internet of things or industry 4.0 model. So some terms there for you to check out as well. The college also participates in the Queensland Minerals and Energy Academy, another gateway to industry schools program. And they also have identified that they are needing programmers, data scientists and anal analysts, coders, cybersecurity specialists, because they too 
are transforming their workflows and digitizing these. They're also looking for robotics or mechatronic engineers. So there are a huge number of opportunities for students in this industry sector as well. So I've provided you with some links that you can check out or do a search on Queensland Minerals and Energy Academy to find out more information. One in eight jobs in Queensland are in the resources sector and Brisbane is considered the biggest mining um, centre in Queensland. You don't need to go out west. So building on from the Digital Technologies National Curriculum, which is studied up until year nine and year 10 in some schools, students in the senior school from year 10 have the opportunity to follow a more academic pathway or a vocational pathway. We also have an entrepreneurial or digital startup pathway, which can be followed or embedded into subjects. Our long-standing Fishburners Entrepreneurial Program has for 2020 developed into a partnership with Scott Miller from BOP Industry and his Youth Entrepreneurship Hub and Fishburners, which is a really exciting opportunity for students to not only engage in entrepreneurial activities, but to be mentored by Scott and his team of very experienced young people with amazing global connections. I really encourage students to check out this opportunity, uh, particularly from year 10 level, uh, because this is going to be a life changer for you. The academic pathway subjects is the year 10 foundation digital solutions and the year 11 and 12 digital solutions subject. These academic subjects use a problem based learning approach in which students explore problems, develop ideas, generate components and digital solutions, evaluate from different um, aspects and refine ideas and digital solutions. They also aim to develop critical 21st century skills. With a focus on digital solutions, subject matter is based around algorithms, so recipes using things like pseudocode or other formal representation methods for algorithms, um, data flow diagrams to give a graphical representation of how data flows through an information system. And we know that data is everywhere. Data is the new oil. Everybody has to enter in data for every aspect of life these days, and that needs to be managed. And of course, some programming languages. So that depends on the technology context and the unit that's being done. Um, you can see there the criterion that are assessed, retrieving and comprehending, analyzing, synthesizing and evaluating and communicating. And like most general subjects, the weighting or the marks allocated to each of those criteria are different for each. Digital Solutions is all about generating digital solutions to problems and these can be quite complex as well. So data is a big focus as is the user interface and the impact on people, the economy and environments. The main technology context that the Year 11 and 12 course will be delivered through will be intelligent systems, particularly the Internet of Things, which is ever growing. Um, also robotics, having a look at some wearables and then also web applications, which are also becoming increasingly important. The other technology context that can be delivered through units one to three are mobile applications uh, or interactive media. And again, the languages or frameworks that are used will be dependent on um, the unit that those are delivered through. This year 10 subject lays a foundation for year 11 and 12, but is not a prerequisite. The new year 11 and 12 digital solutions general subject prepares students for all industries which have digital technologies converging into them. The coding is becoming the new must-have skill and we talk about codies becoming the tradies of the future. So this is a really important unit for all students to engage with. The second unit looks at applications and data solutions and data is now becoming huge. So having skills in data management will give students a competitive edge in all industries. The creation of new and innovative digital technologies and tools, including by digital startup entrepreneurs, is a huge growth area in our economy, particularly in Queensland. So Unit 4 focuses on the digital impact of digital solutions. Cybersecurity is becoming a huge concern for individuals, businesses and governments. 
assessment for Year 10 Foundation Digital Solutions does reflect that that will be used in Year 11 and 12 Digital Solutions as shown here. The first vocational pathway is through applied subjects. So there's a Year 10 Foundation Information and Communication Technology uh, which can then go through to the Year 11 and 12 Information and Communication Technology subject. The Information, Communication and Technology subjects are more about developing competent and confident users and consumers of ICTs rather than designing and developing the digital solutions with the academic pathway. As with the foundation subject in year 10, the year 11 and 12 ICT applied subject um, will be assessing students on three dimensions, knowing and understanding, analysing and applying and producing and evaluating and again following a problem solving approach. The core topics of foundation hardware, software and ICT in society are integrated through the chosen elective contexts. As a foundation subject for year 10 students, they will be engaging with the various topics and contexts, preparing them for the year 11 and 12 subject. And again, um, there will be an interactive augmented virtual reality focus in a community context. These electives can include animation, audio and video production, digital imaging and modelling, document production and website production. We'd also look at augmented and virtual reality in those electives. Um, online communication will be another unit um, that we'll be including in our program and while there are other electives of application development, data management and network fundamentals, these are more covered either um, particularly data and application development through digital solutions and the network fundamentals uh, in the certificates in information, digital media and technology. So again, we're really having an interactive media and augmented and virtual reality focus in this subject. and using our college and local community as the context. So students have to have real world um, products that they're working on with clients um, to meet needs. So um, really exciting. We're wrapping it around our Way Beyond Today program, our Indigenous perspectives, uh, future ability. So uh, really exciting program for students to be involved in. So assessment will be more practical in nature. There will be projects which can be product um, and will have a written spoken or multimodal component or there can be extended responses which can also be delivered in the same way and supervised or unsupervised individual group or team. So this second vocational pathway, Vocational Education and Training or VET, is aimed at students who are looking at employment post year 12 in entry level roles or going on to TAFE or another private provider uh, qualification. So at this point in time, we are the registered training organisation for a certificate two in information, digital media and technology. The whole training package is currently under development and from my industry contacts, I have been advised that Certificate 1 and 2 may no longer be part of that training package and may become a skill set. Um, we are also working to upgrade from a Certificate 2 to a Certificate 3, uh, which will meet industry needs more. So the focus of this subject and these qualifications, if we get to Certificate 3, will be more around focusing on those digital technologies, digital solutions, ICTs that are transforming ICT industry and all other industries. Um, so trying to provide students with the skills, the knowledge, the attitude, all of those things that they need to go into any industry that relies heavily on ICTs. Now, please be aware that delivery of VET certificate qualifications is subject to the uh, national RTO requirements being met. It may be that we end up going with an external registered training organisation to deliver our certificate qualifications um, and possibly even having 
kg teachers as the trainers and assessors if we do move to that model now as with all vet qualifications if there is an external rto then there will be um, a cost it's on a user pay basis if the certificate two does continue at currently as per the current situation there is no cost for that while the college is the registered training organization now once that training package has been redeveloped and is available we'll be able to communicate um, what qualifications will be available I really encourage that students from year 10 engage with a vet course particularly at certificate 3 level now the main reason why I recommend that year 10 start particularly for certificate 3 is if we look at the volume of learning for a certificate 3 it is over six semester units so that's two semester units in each year level year uh, 10 11 and 12 now of course depending on students prior knowledge any evidence that they may have perhaps they've completed other training qualifications uh, they may progress through that more uh, much more quickly than students who are early into um, their ICT skills in the in the areas that we're covering so if students are coming in at year 11 level um, there will need to be arrangements put in place whether it's through uh, additional lines of spares or using access exam blocks etc um, students will need to may or may need to make up um, the difference in the vol volume of learning and it's not recommended that year 12 students come into a certificate 3 qualification is that if that's up and running again depending on prior knowledge and skills they may be able to complete the certificate too if that's still going to be available with the updated training um, package now this is just showing some of the units for the certificate two that we currently have on our scope of registration as with all qualifications there are core units there are elective units which we choose and we try to tailor an experience based on the feedback from um, our industry connectivity um, certificate three of course would have more units that students would need to complete over that period of time now assessment there is a range of assessment we are using projects where possible reflecting real world industry practices so assessment does involve supervisor observations verbal or written questions a portfolio of tasks reviews of different products or services checklists and if students are participating in structured work placement um, which is an option and very much encouraged then we can look at third party reports from employers that they're working with now i really recommend that students aim to try to finish their qualification early uh, that way they can engage in either mentoring in the industry structured work placement uh, work experience the more that they can get into industry to build their resume uh, the higher probability they have of engaging employment post year 12. Just a note there as well, uh, currently the year 10 subject is operating as a foundation. So it has a slightly different code. It has an F in front rather than a V. So in this second vocational pathway, vocational education and training or VET, it's more aimed at students who are seeking employment after graduating in year 12 in entry level roles or looking at TAFE or other private provider type qualifications. So at present, Kelvin Grove is the registered training organization or RTO for a certificate two in creative industries. Now the creative industries training package is currently under redevelopment and we're unsure yet what the structure of the qualifications might be. Uh, for example, in the in information digital media and technology qualifications in the ICT training package they're actually looking at dropping certificate one and two possible possibly looking at dropping those out and making those into a skill set rather than a qualification uh, in the interim we are still working on our proposal to upgrade from our current certificate two in creative industries to a certificate three in screen and media so the qualification um, name and the focus does move for that particular qualification and 
if we are successful in getting this on our scope and introducing it, the focus will be on industry use of interactive media, augmented and virtual reality. So attempting to uh, prepare students for how these new technologies are transforming industries um, from steel fabrication to advanced manufacturing, all sorts of industries are starting to use augmented and virtual reality in particular. Now please note that delivery of any VET certificate qualification is subject to national RTO requirements being met by the college. Um, it may be that we engage an external registered training organisation to deliver our certificate qualifications, uh, particularly if we go to Certificate 3 with that option of having a KG teacher as the trainer and assessor uh, a possibility, which is what we currently have. Now, if we do go to an external RTO, there would be a cost involved. That will be on a user pay basis, as is the case with all other VET qualifications um, available through external RTOs in the college. If we are able to continue with our Certificate 2 or we are able to get a Certificate 3 on our scope of registration, then we wouldn't be looking at uh, the same sort of costs as is the case with an external RTO. Now once that training package is redeveloped and available, uh, we'll then provide further information. I really encourage students to, in year 10 to start looking at their VET pathways, particularly if we do um, move to a Certificate 3 because the volume of learning for that is six semester units. So that's two semester units in each year level, year 10, 11 and 12. Um, so not saying that year 11s coming in may not be able to complete a certificate three, but though we would definitely need to look at arrangements about how to make up equivalent volume of learning, be that through access or study lessons, uh, exam block, etc. But of course, that will also depend on students' prior knowledge skills. Uh, if they have any industry experience, perhaps they've completed another training qualification um, or doing subjects where they've been able to develop develop their, already have some skills or develop their experience in this area. So within the current Certificate 2 in Creative Industries that we have on our scope of registration, so we are the RTO for this qualification, as with any qualification there are a number of core units and elective units. Now we do select the elective units based on um, advice from our industry contacts, also on uh, what we believe students are able to cluster together into projects etc. Um, so that is the current structure and you'll see there are electives needing to be chosen from different groups. Now in terms of assessment, um, a range of assessment types and tasks can be done from supervisor observations and checklists, verbal and written questions, folios of work, reviews of products and services, um, checklists and third party reports if students are participating in structured work placement and as this is a VET pathway I do encourage students to take the opportunity to engage in industry mentoring, work experience, workplace or structured work placement, any engagement with industry that they can um, while they are at school does increase their probability of getting employment on graduating and uh, we're very much happy to support that and do support that uh, both through college processes but within our faculty as well. Now please note um, the year 10 subject currently starts with an F and the year 11 and 12 subject starts with a V. Um, they are currently run as a composite class but that will depend on numbers. Now this subject does have a heavy reliance on industry software including Adobe uh, Creative Cloud which we currently have licenses for Unity so the recommendation is for students to have a higher specification laptop and there's more information about that on the college website uh, but we can generally work around uh, using school computers if we need to.
Thanks again for taking the time to find out more about our faculty and the partnerships and programs that we have. And please, if you do have any questions after watching the videos, contact me by email or come and see me in the library anytime. Thank you.